good morning students and welcome to today's class so in the last class we studied how to do division by two digit divisors correct so in today's class we will be learning how to divide by 10 100 1000 okay and also we'll learn tests of divisibility a few tests of divisibility today all right so first let's see what we have done in the previous class so in the previous class as we just discussed we did division by two digit divisors so it is uh, similar to dividing by a one digit divisor but here what happens here since the divisor is a two digit divisors it will help you in writing if you write the tables of the divisor in the right working margin as it will be very useful for you and helping you to solve the problems easily okay so we saw an example of 465 divided by 13 correct one three so first what you do you can write down the multiplication table for 13 till say maybe seven or eight times okay so then what you can do here we can start dividing 465 by 13 so first since we see first we see the highest place now highest place here is 100 and the digit is 4 in the highest place but we cannot just divide 4 by 13 because the 4 is smaller than 13 so what we'll do we'll take the next digit also here 46 so we divide 46 by 13 so in 13 tables if you observe nearest to 46 is 52 and 39 but we cannot take 52 because 52 is greater than 46 so we'll take 39 now here 13 3 is as 39 so we'll write 3 in the quotient place and subtract 46 from 39 you'll have a remainder of 7 and then now here 7 is not divided cannot be divided by 13 so we'll bring down the next digit which is 5 so we got 75 now in 13 tables nearest to 75 which is less than 75 is 65 so 13 fives are 65 so we'll write 5 here in quotient and subtract 75 minus 65 so we got 10 okay so what is the quotient here the quotient here is 35 the remainder is 10 all right so now if you want to verify it you can verify using the bdqr rule that is dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder so first what we'll do we'll multiply divisor with the quotient that is 35 with 13 so when you multiply you'll get 455 and then we'll add 455 to the remainder which is 10 so 455 plus 10 is 465 so 465 is equal to your dividend correct so it means that your answer is verified so this is how you do division by two digit divisors so we saw various examples and we also saw the questions which are there in your textbook now what we'll do is we'll do division by 10 100 and 1000 so in third standard you'll have already see what happens to a number what quotient and remainder you get when you divide a number by 10 so you have seen the pattern so let's see again so 75 divided by 10 so your quotient here is 7 remainder is 5 okay so 258 divided by 10 25 is the quotient and 8 is the remainder same way 3420 divided by 10 342 is the quotient and 0 is the remainder so what we see here whenever we divide a number by 10 the ones digit okay the ones digit forms the remainder and the remaining digit gives us the quotient okay so when you divide a number by 10 the ones place gives you the ones digit gives you the remainder and the remaining digits give you the quotient okay so similarly when you divide a number by 100 you will see what happens now 314 divided by 100 so 100 threes are 300 so when you subtract you will have a remainder of 14 so we have a quotient of 3 remainder 14 same 4785 divided by 100 see 100 fours are 400 so 478 minus 400 is 78 then we will bring down 5 so 100 sevens are 700 so you will have a remainder of 85 so quotient here is 47 and remainder is 85 same way when we do 6930 divided by 100 we will get a quotient of 69 and a remainder of 30 so now as you see whenever we divide a number by 100 the tens and the ones digit of the dividend 
together from the remainder and the remaining digits give us the quotient so when you divide the number by 100 the tens and the ones digit together form the remainder and rest of the remaining digit give you the quotient okay similarly when you divide a number by 1000 what happens the hundreds tens and ones digit give you the remainder and the remaining digits give you the quotient okay see uh, okay so here they have told write the quotient and remainder okay write the quotient and remainder when 23485 is divided by 10 hundred and thousand so when you divide it by 10 5 is a remainder 2348 is the quotient and then when you divide by 100 okay so 10s and 1s place will be the remainder that is 85 and 234 will be the quotient now when you divide by 1000 what is happening 100s 10s and 1s digits are the remainder so 485 and the quotient is 23 so now when you observe these see that whenever number is divided by 10 100 and 1000 and so on the remainder has many digits as many digits as the number of zeros in the divisor so how many zeros are there in the divisor that many digits will be there in the remainder okay and the remaining digits form the quotient okay so this is how you divide a number by tens hundreds and thousands so let's see a few questions on this so page number 129 in your textbooks so here they've told write the quotient and remainder so you have to write the quotient and the remainder okay so first 54 divided by 10 so what happens when you divide 54 by 10 what first you write the remainder now one's place will be the remainder so one's place here is four so four is the remainder and the quotient is the remaining digit that is five so quotient is five remainder is four okay so now 685 divided by 10 so again divide by 10 so here 68 is the quotient and remainder is 5 okay 218 divided by 100 so one digit will be the remainder and the remaining digits form the quotient so here 21 are the remaining digits and the remainder is 8 okay quotient is 21 and remainder is 8 okay so next 2440 divided by 100 now here tens and ones place will form the remainder so the thousands and the hundreds place is the quotient that is 24 and the remainder is 40 4040 is the remainder okay now 3695 divided by 1000 so since 1000 is there hundreds tens and ones place make the remainder so the remaining leftover place here is only 1000 so 3 is the remain uh, quotient here and 695 is the remainder okay and the last one 43524 so here again divide by 1000 so 43 will be the quotient and the remainder will be 524 okay so this is division by 10 hundreds and thousands now we will see how to do uh, tests of divisibility okay so before we see what is tests of divisibility what is divisibility okay when you divide a number that is a dividend by a divisor okay and you get a remainder as zero okay when you get zero as the remainder it means that it is exact division okay or whenever a number is divided by another number and you get a remainder as zero okay it means that the dividend is divisible by the divisor okay if you are getting the remainder as zero then the number is divisible by the divisor all right so this is the meaning of divisibility so there are a few tests of divisibility to check if a number is divisible by certain numbers such as Today we will be learning 2, 3, 4, 5. If a number is divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10. So, first uh, we will see divisibility rule for 5 and 10. So, what happens when you divide a number by 5? 
okay so if the digit in the ones place okay the digit in the ones place is 5 or 0 okay then it means that the number is divisible by 5 okay so for example here they have given 7000 17285 now in 17285 5 is in the ones place and we know that if 5 is there in the ones place it means that the number is divisible by 5 so digit in ones place is 5 so 17,285 is divisible by 5. <coughs> Same way if the number was 17,280, then since the digit is, once digit is 0, okay, then the number would be divisible by 5. Okay, so this is the divis divisibility rule for 5. Now coming on to 10. Now when you see the tables or the multiples of 10, we have 10, 100, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, what do you observe? All the multiples of 10 are ending with a 0, correct? All are ending with a 0. So, whenever a number has 0 in its 1 place, okay, the digit in the 1's place is 0, then the number will be divisible by 10. Okay, so here they have given 17,280. So, the digit in the 1's place is 0, so 17,280 is divisible by 10. Okay, so this is the divisibility rule for 5 and 10. You will see a few questions which are there in your textbook based on that. So here question 2, test whether the following numbers are divisible by 5 and 10. So we have to check if the numbers are divisible by 5 and 10 both. Okay, so first number is 3425. So first we will check if 3425 is divisible by 5 okay now what is the digit in ones place the digit in ones place is 5 so when we know that when our since 3000 the number 3425 uh, has 5 in ones place correct so it means that it is divisible by 5 now coming to uh, divisibility by 10 now we know that if only if the number has 0 in its ones place then the number is divisible by 10 but here the number has 5 in its 1's place. So it means that this is not divisible by 10. So the number 3425 has 5 in 1's place. Hence it is divisible by 5 and not divisible by 10. Okay, it is not divisible by 10 but it is only divisible by 5. Then the next question 47120. So the next question is 47,120. Now if you see 47,120 has 0 in its 1's place, correct? So if we check for 5, now we know that whenever digit ends with either 5 or 0, then the number is divisible by 5. So since it is ending, uh, since the 1's place is 0, it means that this number is divisible by 5. Okay, then coming to 10, divisible by 10. So we know that whenever a digit has 0 in its 1's place, then it is divisible by 10. So since it has 0, it is divisible by 10. So the number 47,120 has 0 in 1's place. Hence it is divisible by 5 and 10 both. Okay. Then next question. 36, uh, 364,283. Okay. Now here, when you see the 1's place. In 1's place, I have 3. Correct. I have 3 in 1's place. So, whenever, uh, now, for 5, for divisibility by 5, we know that it should be either 5 or 0. Since it is neither 5 nor 0, it is 3. So, it is not divisible by 5. And what about divisible by 10? Since the once digit is not 0, it is not divisible by 10 also. So, the number 3,64,283 has neither 5 or 0 in one's place. Hence, it is not divisible by 5 and 10 both okay so this was the question for divisibility by 5 and 10 now what we'll do is we'll uh, see the divisibility rule for 2 4 and 8 now divisibility rule for 2 is very simple whenever any the given number is an even number okay 
whenever given number is an even number it means that it is divisible by 2 simple if a number is an even number then it is divisible by 2 or you can even check the ones place if the ones place has the digits 2 4 6 8 or 0 then it is divisible by 2 okay if the digit in ones place is even or 0 then the number is divisible by 2 understood this is the rule for divisibility by 2 so the ones digit should be an even number then the number is an even number and divisible by 2 then for 4 now uh, to check the divisibility by 4 okay what you have to do now you have to check the given number that is you have to check the digit in tens and ones place okay when you take the digits in tens and ones place together okay you have to see if it is divide divisible by 4 okay that is now here they have given an example of 17,284 now here the tens and ones place taken together is 84 so you have to check if 84 divided by 4 gives you a remainder of 0 okay that means it is divisible by 4 so if it is div 84 is divisible by 4 then 17,284 also will be divisible by 4 now here 84 is divisible by 4 that is when you divide 84 by 4 you get a remainder of 0 so 17,284 is also divisible by 4 okay so this is the divisibility rule for 4 now coming to divisibility rule for 8 okay now in 4 we check tens and ones place together if it is divisible by 4 in for divisibility rule for 8 we will check the hundreds tens and ones place taken together if these three digits together are divisible by 8 yeah then it is div then the entire number is divisible by 8 so here we have taken an example of 17288 so we'll see the hundreds tens and ones place now your hundreds tens and ones place is 288 now 288 when you divide by 8 gives you a remainder of 0 so 288 is divisible by 8 therefore 17288 will also be divisible by 8 okay so these are the divisibility rules for 2 4 and 8 all right so let's see a few questions on this so test whether the following numbers are divisible by 2, 4, 8. Okay. So, 2137. Okay. Now, to check for divisibility rule by 2 first. We know that if the number is an even number, then it is divisible by 2. But if you see here, the digit in 1's place is 7. Correct. Since 7 is not an even number, it is an odd number. 2137 is also an odd number. So, it will not be divisible by 2. Okay, so 2, 1, 3, 7 is not divisible by 2. Now, coming to 4. Okay, now to check 4, if it is divisible by 4, what you do? You have to take the last two digits, that is the tens and the ones place, 37. Now, we know that 37 is not divisible by 4. Okay, so uh, 2137 also will not be divisible by 4. Then, coming to 8. We check the hundreds, tens and ones place. Hundreds place is 1, 3 and 7. So, 137. So, 137 will not be divisible by 8. Therefore, 2137 will also not be divisible by 8. Now, here for this number, what you can do, instead of sitting and dividing it by 4, 8 every time, what you can do is, if you see, it is an odd number, okay? And 2, 4, 8 are all even numbers, right? So, 2, 4, 8 are all even numbers. So, it's all tables also are even numbers. They will not have odd numbers. So, an odd number will not be divisible by 2, 4 and 8. So, if you get to check an odd number if it is divisible by 2, 4 or 8, you can directly write 2137 is not an even number or it is an odd number. So, it is not divisible by 2, 4 or 8. Okay. Then. 26,424. Now here, since uh, the number is an even number, correct? 
since it's ending with four, the ones place is four, it is divisible by two. Okay, so divisibility by two is none. Then four. To check four, you'll see if tens and ones place together is divisible by four. Tens and ones place together is twenty-four. So twenty-four divided by four, you will get a remainder of zero. So it means that twenty-four is divide divisible by four. So twenty-six thousand four twenty-four is divisible by four. Okay, then coming to divisibility by eight. Now here, if you see four hundred and twenty-four divided by eight, that is the hundreds, tens, and ones placed together. If you take and divide by eight, you'll get a remainder of zero. So this number is divisible by eight. So four twenty-four is divisible by eight. So twenty-six four twenty-four is also divisible by eight. All right, so this was divisibility for two, four, and eight. So now here, uh, question C of question number three, and that is this question. Okay, so try to do do this question for homework, and here question number five, which is given, try to do that question also for your homework. So three C and five is your homework for today. In the next class, what we'll do is we'll uh, learn the divisibility rules for three, six, and nine. Okay, three, nine, and six, and we'll do, uh, then we'll solve the question number four. So question four is still not done. We'll do it in the next class. Okay, we'll learn three, nine divisibility for three, nine, and six. Okay, and then we'll do that question. All right, and then we'll do the word problems also in the next class. Okay, all right. Thank you, students.